Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to, I want to tell you about a couple of visits that I made over the last week. Um, a good reminder for me in these visits. So, so uh, the dates are kind of running together, but um, Nola Edmondson. Some of you know uh, Nola or knew Nola. Uh, she was 98 years old. She passed away um, last week. Uh, prior to that, a um, couple days before she died, I was able to visit with her. And, uh, and, and when I say visit with her, she wasn't able to communicate anymore. Um, but I was able to spend a little time with her. Now, now if we go back a little bit, uh, she had really lost her ability to hear uh, over the last several years. Used to be you could get real close to her and yell really loud and, and she could maybe get a little whisper of it. Um, but over the last couple of years, she couldn't really even do that. Um, and, and then, uh, so you could write notes, right? You write her a note, and she was able to read the note, and then she could respond to you and, and uh, have a conversation like that. But then over the last, oh, I don't know, last several months, uh, she was unable to see uh, very clearly also. So then you could write a real big note, and she could read that. Um, but most of the time... It was uh, to where you could just kind of hold her hand, and she'd smile and chat with you, and, and uh, uh, at least the one-sided conversation, because she could talk about whatever she wanted to talk about. Um, but, but last week in this visit, um, she couldn't hear anymore, and she couldn't see anymore, and she couldn't respond anymore. And when I held her hand, she couldn't really squeeze it back anymore. Uh, she's in the last hours of her life, the last days of her life. And so, so the, the things I was bringing, right, the things I was bringing to go and maybe a listening ear, well, that really wasn't, wasn't available. Or uh, to read her scripture, you know, some might say, well, she could hear it, but, but who knows, you know, maybe, maybe not. Um, uh, any of those things, but, you know, I was still bringing her something that was the most valuable, uh, I was bringing her the presence of Jesus. Uh, not because I'm a pastor, don't get me wrong. That, that's not the, you know, the, the pastor's role coming to represent Jesus. No, that's, that's because I'm a Christian. And because I'm a Christian, because I believe in Jesus Christ, my bringing the presence of Jesus to simply sit with her, be with her. Because uh, as Chris shared with the children, this is true. When, when Jesus is involved, things change. When Jesus came and was involved, even in that time with her, uh, as, as brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, she was brought peace, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, similarly, uh, a few days ago, I was able to visit Martha. I mentioned to you Martha's funerals tomorrow. Um, last days, last hours, to go and spend some time with her. And, you know, my thinking sometimes goes to, uh, what could I bring to her in this visit? Because in the past, if you know Martha, she would want you to bring some things to her, right? A bulletin and maybe some notes. And she, you know, if came to bring communion, she would at times say to me, um, I'd say, well, I did bring communion. She's like, well, it's about time. Let's get to it. And <laughs> so bringing things of value to Martha um, only this visit last week, um, she wasn't able to hear or see or respond. She wasn't able to hold my hand back, right? She was um, progressed to the point to where she was in the last hours of her life. But again, reminded of what is it that I bring? And it's not a listening ear and it's not uh, great words. It's, it's, it's the presence of Jesus. It's the most valuable thing. Not because of my role, not because I'm a pastor, not because of that, but because I'm a Christian. It's the same thing that, that you bring. And, and I want to talk about this for a bit, but, but think about how you then bring, if you're a believer in Christ, if you, uh, if you are one who has been redeemed by Christ, then you bring his presence to your wife, to your husband, or to your child, or to your, to your parents, to your grandparent, to your grandchild. It's the greatest thing, it's the, great, it's the greatest presence that you would bring. Um, I, I want to go back to this gospel reading because the gospel reading for today uh, gives us a very tangible reminder of the presence of Jesus Christ. So, so we've been reading through the gospel of Luke and over the last several weeks we've been talking a bit about uh, because Luke was a physician, we're kind of playing with these words a bit, but to say what kind of prescription would 
Dr. Luke give to us to prepare us for this Christmas celebration. And so today we go back, all the way back to the very beginning of the Gospel of Luke. And in Luke chapter 1, uh, Chris read that just a few moments ago, but I want to back up even further to the, to the backstory behind this visit that Mary was making to Elizabeth. If we go back just a little bit, um, this is how this came about. So the angel Gabriel came and visited Zachariah, it's Elizabeth's husband. And Zechariah was kind of worked at the church. Um, he was at the temple and it rotated around and so it was his time to serve at the temple and while he was there is when this angel Gabriel came and, and gave him some very important news. News that he um, didn't think possible for him to hear. The news was that they, he and his wife, were going to have a child. Uh, this, this was shocking to Zechariah because they were getting along in years, is what the scriptures say. So they were getting older, and Elizabeth was thought to be barren, in other words, that, that she couldn't have children. And this was, in that day and age, a, a great tragedy, especially for him being a leader in, at the temple, because it meant, they thought, that God was punishing them in some way. And so he hears this news from the angel saying, you're going to bear a son, and, and you're going to name that son John, and this, this child, this man, will prepare the way for the Messiah. It's John the Baptist, right? And so he receives this news, and he kind of talks back and asks some questions, and, and uh, the angel says, well, now you're not going to be able to speak until this all comes true, and, and so there's some confusion as he goes out from the place, and uh, that's a whole nother story. So six months later, the angel Gabriel is at it again. And this time he comes to Mary. And Mary is not married. And the, she, he, he's going to announce to her that she's going to have a child. But this child is going to be uh, given to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so she is going to uh, have a child. And this child, they would name Jesus. And the angel says, and the people will call him, he will be called the Son of God. And he will take away the sins of the people. It's the Messiah. Well, this is, of course, it's a terrifying, shocking time for Mary. And so, as the text says, three days later, a couple days later, she heads off to go visit Elizabeth. It's her relative. Elizabeth's older than her. Uh, she's six months along in her pregnancy. Um, Mary shocked and surprised by all of this. Boy, they had a lot to talk about, no doubt. Um, they could have talked about, oh, the story about the angel. They could have talked about their pregnancies. They could have talked about, and probably did. Uh, if they go to the doctor in those days, they could talk about their doctor's visits for their pregnancy. And all, and all that stuff that, that two ladies with children would discuss. And it would all be very important, I'm sure. And, and very comforting for, for Mary, I'm sure. But you know what, what was the most important thing? Is that in that visit, as she headed off to the hill country and she went into the town and the community and she went and she greeted her, her relative Elizabeth, she brought with her the presence of Jesus. The, the physical presence of Jesus. And, and we know that there is a change that happened because it says uh, John, still in the womb, he, he jumps in her belly, celebrating even the presence of Jesus. And it says Elizabeth is immediately filled with the Holy Spirit because of the presence of Jesus. Now this, this text of scripture can tell us a whole lot about, even about things like the sanctity of life and that God uh, loves and honors children even before they're, they're born, right? It, it could tell us a lot about uh, even how God would work in the hearts of a child like John to allow him to praise and worship essentially Jesus even still in the womb. It could tell us a lot about these things. But here's what it also tells us about. It tells us, like the children's message, it says when Jesus is present, things change. When Jesus is present, even in the womb, when Jesus is present, uh, he is God incarnate there in the presence of, of people. And people are changed. If you look... Uh, even beyond in scripture, because his presence is displayed in many ways. 
In fact, if you were to look at uh, uh, the first chapter of Luke, and it talks about the presence of God uh, in Jesus Christ, even in the womb, that's the reading we have today. And then if you look at the very last chapter of Luke, it's talking about the presence of God. And he's talking about how God comes in his presence by the power of the Holy Spirit to people like you and me. It's, it's literally Jesus saying, I will send my spirit into you and send you out into the world. Right? The beautiful picture of the presence of God in and among his people. This, this is how we would even celebrate it today. Let me give you some examples today. So, so today, when Taya is baptized and her, uh, this uh, group comes forward and this young lady stands before the font and she already believes in Jesus, she trusts in Jesus, she, she has faith that Jesus has died for her sins. So, so she is a Christian, she's a believer, but she would be a, a baptized believer reminding her, because the scriptures say it, is that she's been joined with Jesus. As Chris said, his, his life, his death, and his resurrection, joined to Jesus, life, death, and resurrection. The presence of Jesus, even being seen and witnessed today in Taya's baptism. Another example would be, uh, even as, as others would come, and they have uh, uh, examined their heart, they've confirmed this faith that God has given them, and, and, and you would gather around the altar to receive the body and blood of Christ. You're coming for communion, of course. But what the Bible says is that you're coming to receive the presence of Jesus. In, with, and under this bread and wine, you receive the, the very body and blood of Jesus, his presence, to strengthen you in faith, to provide you forgiveness of sins, to strengthen you to, to then go out, go out into the world. Uh, let me give you another example. Another example is, is not at the font or at the altar, but even as you sit right here today, because see, see, you who come into this place and you, you hear, even through Chris's words, you know that you have lived an imperfect life. You know that you have sinned. You know you have uh, done the things that you're not supposed to do and that you haven't done the things that you were supposed to do. You, you like me, have sinned and fallen short of this perfect life that God requires. And because of that, the Bible would say you would be separated from the presence of God in hell forever, except, except for Jesus Christ, who came in to this world, took your sins upon himself, died for you in your place, and then announced to you that your sins are completely forgiven. You know what's added? Is that he would be with you. He would fill your heart. His presence would never leave you, right? His presence would be in every single one of you that believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior, right? His, his presence seen here, his presence seen here, and his presence seen literally in you, every single one of you who believe in Jesus. This is meaningful for us today, absolutely meaningful for us today, uh, because you go to visit your cousins, your friends, and your, and your family members, and, and, and you go to spend time with your husband or your wife or your child or your, or your parent or your grandchild or your grandparents, right? Especially during the season as you're sent from this place. And when you go, you're going to do all kinds of, take all kinds of great things with you. Maybe even over the next couple days, you'll take some presents along. You take some food along. Maybe you take some, some, some beverages along to spend some time with your family, your friends, your loved ones. Maybe you'll actually even spend some time alone just with your spouse. Or maybe you'll kneel beside your kid's bed at, at, at time for prayers tomorrow evening. Or oh, You will bring something even better than all of those things. Because you bring the very presence of Jesus Christ with you. You bring the very presence of Jesus Christ for your wife, for your husband for your child, for your grandchild. As we've been reading through the Gospel of Luke, I told you that we're looking at these prescriptions, so to speak. And, and today, if we were going to say, what's the prescription that, that Luke would provide for us, especially for Christmas? And, and I think it would be this, that you would be changed, you would be reminded, you would be confident, in whatever situation you're in, whether you're at the hospital or the nursing home or at home or at your family member's house, 
is that when you step into that place, when you step into that room, when you step into that relationship, that our prescription would be, I bring the presence of Jesus. And that you would provide for them the comfort of Jesus. You would provide for them the encouragement of Jesus. You'd provide for them the forgiveness found in Jesus. You'd be reminded that, that when Jesus is present, everything changes, even, even through you. Amen. It's great to worship with you again today. We continue our worship with an opportunity to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Um, and also, um, following our offering, we celebrate with Taya on the day of her baptism.